Well, uh, we spent a few weeks talking about uh, no condemnation. We're going to, there's some few things I thought, you know, sometimes you start in like last time. I think I'm going to cover certain things, don't get to it because, you know, we just go with the, uh, what we have here, but also just the unction of the Holy Spirit. And as you get into certain things, there's just, there's something on it. And so we go with that because that's the Lord quickening things. I don't want to go by our, we don't want to go by our heads and be like, well, let's be locked into this. No, we're always just open to what the Spirit would say and uh, where we need to go. And uh, like we said, it's not, it's not me ministering, it's the Lord ministering to us. So we want to let Him do whatever He wants to do. That's what we pray beforehand. So let's look at John 3, 16 and 17. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So He didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. The whole world is actually reconciled to God through Jesus, but they have to receive it. But the, the potential is there. The price has been paid. The ransom has been paid. So the whole world actually has been reconciled to God. And in His eyes, that's been done. Except that it, every person has to, they have to receive it. They have to pick it up. You know, it's... It's like if, if you were to provide um, uh, gift cards for a group of people, you know, you went in and just for a classroom or, you know, a bunch of your family or your employees and said, hey, you know, we, we provided just a $100 gift card for anybody that picks one up. We, we've got them for everybody. We got enough for everybody and, you know, but you got to go to the front desk and get it. In your mind, every one of those people has that gift card. They, it's provided, you paid the money, it's done. The money isn't paid when they pick it up. The money, it's already been paid. The gift cards are bought and paid for. You've gone and picked them up. They're in envelopes or whatever. But if they don't go pick it up, well, in that case, you'd use it for something else. They didn't pick it up. Maybe you drop it off. But, I mean, if it was a situation where they had to go pick it up, you weren't going to give it to them. You're not going to force them. on. I'm not going to force you to go eat a nice meal. You, you couldn't say, well, they didn't pick it up. So, you know, if they didn't pick it up, it's your fault for not giving it to them. You, you bought and paid for it. You put it in place. You communicated with them where the place was. Uh, you're not going to treat them like a child if they don't want to get it. That's up to them. That's their free will, right? Yeah. Well, God has already bought and paid for salvation and so much more for us. Well, we gotta we gotta receive it, we gotta pick it up. But the whole world has the ability to be saved. But uh, you know, one thing is we gotta tell them. Yeah. We're the communication piece. You know, how are they gonna know without a preacher? How are they gonna have a preacher unless they're sent? You know, how they can be sent unless they hear and you know, they have to understand the Word of God, so we are the vessels through which God uh, can get His truth to people, but then they have to receive it. You can't ever force anybody to receive the Word of God. God doesn't. That's not our job to, to force them. It's our job to communicate, but you got to be led on how you do it. You know, you can do more damage trying to... Uh, we want to share the gospel, and you want, to be, you want to be considerate and kind and compassionate and treat people like, you know, with dignity and respect, but communicate the word to them. And then it's up to them. And it's up to them to receive, but if we don't communicate it, then they can't hear. But, so God did not send uh, His Son into the world so that, said to beat up the world, to condemn them but so that they'd be saved. And that, you know, that'll change the way we look at people. Every person's precious in His sight. Jesus died for people. Every person is precious. So when we see somebody, we might think, think all kinds of things, and we don't want to be judgmental. 
You don't know what somebody's gone through. You can think, well, I mean, boy, they're, they're mean or whatever. Well, God still, God died, uh, sent Jesus to die for them. We're not supposed to be communicators of guilt and shame and condemnation. We're supposed to be communicators of, you know what, God loves you. In spite of everything, he's reconciled. They're precious in his sight. And if they reject him, that's, uh, that's between them and him. We don't want to get in the middle and be condemning anybody, be judging anybody. That's not our job. Our job is just to communicate the love of God and to be as loving and as gracious and as kind as we can be to people, even if they're a pain in the rear end, pain in the neck, pain in the back, pain wherever. We still, uh, our job is just to represent the love of God. And uh, not beat them up. That's not going to help. You don't shame anybody in the kingdom of God. We just uh, we give them the word, and then they can decide what they're going to do with it. So there's no condemnation. Uh, there's no condemnation. To, to go ahead and look at Romans 8, verse 1. We read this as well. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So if we walk the way we're supposed to walk, there's not any condemnation for us. If we don't, we talked about that especially a couple weeks ago, if if we decide we're just going to do whatever we want anyway, there will be condemnation. But the good news is you don't have to live in condemnation. I don't have to live in condemnation. If we miss it, get right back on God's side, acknowledge it, go on, and we don't have to live condemned. That's not the way uh, God wants us to live. He wants us to be free, to be free, be free from condemnation, be free from getting beat up, free from a, a slave mentality, but just free to serve Him and have our conscience clear. Oh boy, to have a clear conscience and to just be at peace. You know, you realize there's people in the world that are just... They'd pay any amount of money to be at peace and to be just clear. But they, they may not know that it's God. They may not know that um, God has reconciled them, and so they try everything else. They may have tried religion. They may have think they tried Jesus. They may think they had tried Jesus, but they tried religion, and so they're, they're you know, that's a bad place to be. Think you already went to God and there wasn't anything there so you're trying something else but God is the answer that's why we want to represent God well we don't want to be we don't want to be a reason why they're thinking well, I don't if it's like that I don't want to be like that person not put pressure on us on the other hand we we are the representation of of the Lord in the earth but God people try all kinds of stuff trying to get peace trying to just get okay and um, the answer is Jesus. So we read this last week, Galatians 2, verse 11. Let's, let's look at that briefly and hopefully get a little bit further. Galatians uh, 2, verse 11. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face, this, the Apostle Paul, because he was to be blamed... For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles, but when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision, of the Jewish people. And the rest of the Jews played, also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified. So verse 16 uh, Paul is saying, Knowing that a man is not justified or declared righteous or acquitted by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, you can't, be, you can't be justified with God by what you do. It's only by what Jesus has done. And we talked a lot about that last time. Uh, 
It says, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith or acquitted by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So it's not by the works of the law, talking specifically about the Old Covenant, the law, the first five uh, books of the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, all all that's included. Um, You're not acquitted, you're not made righteous by doing those things. And we made this comment, but we're going to go further. It's not by doing any uh, certain rule abiding or methods either. And, and people can make up all kind of laws to themselves. Well, this is the way you're right with God. This, it may not say it like that, but if you do these things, if you behave this way, if you have this schedule, if you eat these foods, if you wear these clothes, be careful, that's religion, that's creating a uh, method, that's creating a form of godliness, like it looks like this. All that's religion. Doesn't matter where it comes from. If it's if it's not according to the word of God specifically, you can't you can't um, you can't tell people to do something that's not specifically in the word. We can have conviction about something like, well, in my in you know, I believe God's led me this way in my life. Maybe we had to deal with certain things in our life or had certain habits or came out of a certain culture or whatever. And for us, God led us a certain way because it's going to be best if we avoid certain things or if we uh, pick up certain things of behavior because it's just going to help us on our, our, our road, our path. But if the Word doesn't tell you or me... If the Word doesn't say specifically to do those things, then you can't. We don't have the authority. We don't have the moral right. We don't have the authority to represent God and say, well, you should do it this way. Mm-hmm. What you could say is, this helped me. I, you know, I, I, I was led to do this. It helped me. But you can't go and say, this is the way you need to do it. Just Even if it worked marvelously, and even if the results were great in our own life and even several people's lives. That doesn't be very careful about starting to make a method out of that. Well, this is the way you do it. You can do that way. People do that with church, right? Well, this is the way we do it. Boy, the Spirit, I mean, we had this service and, I mean, we had sung this song and we had praised God this way. So, well, that's the lever. Next time, let's play, let's sing that song. Let's praise this way and let's expect the presence of God. That's religion. You ever wonder why certain things are so rigid and certain, you know, uh, and we got to be careful. We're not pointing the finger at anybody else, but you, think you can get really rigid with worship. You do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this. This is the way it is. We say these words and we say these words, and then there's a response and we say th- somewhere that began. And um, you ever wonder why there's so many denominations? <laughs> In Christianity, uh, basic thing is somebody got a revelation of something which isn't bad. The Spirit of God's moving because, you know, there's truth. Truth can be lost. You know, in the dark ages, there's places where people were not walking in the revelation, full revelation of the Word of God. And then somebody gets a hold of a truth. This is in the Word. This is in the Word. We, we're coming to, we see this truth and we're emphasizing it. Well, then God's, he's, he's backing up His Word, and He's helping people to see. But be careful, what happens is people set up on that truth. And now God starts to bring something else, emphasize something else, and they're stuck there. But then people want to move on. Well, disagreements, so we're going to start our own denomination, and then they move on. And they got this other truth that they're emphasizing. These guys stay here. Not that God's not doing anything in their life, but it can become dead. These other people, they're going on. This is what we're emphasizing until, hey, but God wants to emphasize something else. And well, we're not moving with that. (laughs) Boom. Okay, we're going to go ahead. And it just, it can keep going like that. What we should be is that we're open to all the Word of God, all that God wants to do. And there's no If it's not exactly in the Word of God, then we are not setting up, this is the way to do it. These are the songs you sing. 
these are the words you say. This is how we pray. This is the tone of voice we use when we pray. We're going to use certain language. We're going to use certain gestures in worship. I'm not going to even move my hands to emphasize any, you know, imitate anything, but people can get in a rut. There's, you know, a certain song or a certain uh, artist that could be really anointed and they worship God in a certain way, even physically. And pretty soon you got hundred hundred or a thousand or five thousand people that are all imitating them. When they sing that same song or they sing it songs and they're physically imitating, doing, raising their hands the same way, moving their hands the same way, there's nothing wrong with uh, you know, doing something like somebody, just don't make that the way. Well, this is how you worship God. Anyway, we don't want to set that up. All of that is just religion. And there's no use pointing at anybody else and saying they're religion. What we need to be going is, do I have it? And it's so easy. It's so easy to be like that. It's so easy to, we don't even know. You know, when you, you when, here's, a, here's a good thing, a, 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 an indicator. When we read the Word of God and then we see something, if it contradicts what we're doing, but what we're doing or what we have done or method or whatever, we're, it's really ingrained in us. It's really something we like to do, but we actually see something that's like, wait a minute. That's not actually in the Bible. That's actually, the Bible says something else. We have a decision to make. <laughs> At that point, we're like, yeah, but so-and-so said this. It doesn't matter who so. Did so-and-so say it? Was it based on the Word of God when they said it? Yeah, but they were. I mean, I respect everything about them. Great. Is it in the Bible? I don't care who it is, me, anybody else. If we look at it and go, that's not actually in the Bible. Now, it could be it's a conviction. It's the way uh, they minister. It's something they said that helped them. All these things are good. It doesn't mean it's doctrine, though. And so we have to, we can't, and then we can't say, well, so-and-so said this, and you're disagreeing with so-and-so. Who cares? Is it in the Bible? See, that's just, that's, that's all religion. Well, so that's what's going on, you know, in Galatians. They were, people are acting a certain way, they're going back under the law, and there's pressure to behave a certain way because some of the, the, the leaders are acting a certain way, and so it's, it's easy to get caught up in that. It reminds me of a story. Um, Brother Keith Moore taught, uh, mentioned this. He, was, he would travel with Kenneth E. Hagin Sr. and, uh, you know, at, at crusades and would teach sometimes, and he would sing, and he, he related this story. I, I, at, at one point, he and his wife, Phyllis, uh, or he, I, anyway, I think he was, Brother Moore was in the front seat somehow, I believe that's how it went, and um, Brother Hagen was behind him, and all of a sudden, they're driving in between the meeting, you know, I think it was away from the meeting, maybe it was to the meeting, and Brother Hagen all of a sudden said, he just starts going, oh, oh, or just, you know, is like shaking, and he's shaking, um, can't remember the detail of that. He was either just saying, oh, or, or he was shaking the seat or something. Don't remember the detail on that. But he was saying something. Then he goes, did you feel that to Brother Moore? And he felt, he was like, he didn't feel anything. And he's like, do I just say that? Or, you know, there was pressure to feel like I should have felt something. I should say something. And then he, he just said, no, I didn't feel anything. He said, neither did I. And then Brother Hagin said, neither did I. <laughs> he was testing him. Now, what if he would have said, what if Brother Keith would have said, oh, yeah, well, what does that mean? Now he's putting on. So we don't want to be different when we're around certain people. It's okay just to be you. If you, if you don't get it, if you don't, feel something, don't feel pressure to put on a show. You may be right. Maybe the emperor has no clothes. Everybody get that reference? No? You remember the old story? 
There's a, there, you guys really, they haven't in school? No, never? So there's this fable. I'm not going to go into all of it, but basically there's this emperor going around and he always had the nicest clothes. They, they would make, spend, you know, he's the emperor, all this money on him getting the, the nicest clothes and they would make nice outfits just for him, just like people do today, you know, a custom suit that cost you many thousand dollars. And so these con artists came and they said they wanted to make a, a suit of clothes for them. And so they conned the emperor and basically said, but this, with the thread that we're making, it's only certain people that can see it. You have to be really discerning and, you know, you only have to be a certain level to be able to see this and how beautiful. And so they, they put on, they, 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 they said they made the clothes and put it there for the emperor which they didn't make anything. There's nothing there. And they said, now here, they put it, draped it on him, which they're not draping anything, and said, do you see it? And the emperor didn't want to look like a fool. There was nothing there, but they were conning him. And he didn't want to look bad, like he couldn't see, because they were like only really discerning wise people and whatever could see this. So he's looking in the mirror, so he goes, yes, it, it, looks, it looks marvelous. He's not wearing anything. He's naked. Or has his underwear on with whatever. Make it PG. <laughs> I don't know the degree. But anyway, so he goes out, and so then they start broadcasting it. That look at the emperor's great clothes, and, the, and you know, he needs just acting like, well, only certain people can see it. And the, the common people are looking and going, the dude's naked. He doesn't have anything on. They can see that, but all the people were falling. And nobody wants to tell the emperor because they don't want to look like a fool. They're walking with him. He, he's asking his uh, people that were close to him. Nobody wants to say, I, I don't see anything. So it just keeps going. Except that when they're around the common people, they're just laughing because the dude doesn't have any clothes on. <laughs> and so everybody's caught up with it. Don't ever, just because there's a big, you know, uh, noise around something, be like, oh, that's so great. If it doesn't bear witness with you and it's not in the Bible, you throw it out. I don't care who says it. Because you may be the one that's right. It may be off. It may be there's nothing there. It may be there's nothing biblical. Anyway, why we get off on all that? So we don't want to fall into a way of behavior or, yes, you need to do this diet, you need to have this regimen because it's holy. Says who? Find that in the Bible. I mean, there are certain things that were very dietary the way they were supposed to be in the Old Testament, but there are plenty of scriptures in the New Testament that said if it's sanctified by the Word of God and prayer, it's fine. On the other hand, not everything you eat is good for you. So don't go <laughs> over here like, well, you need anything. Well, sure you can. You know, you can go get candy and just eat that, period. You can do it. It probably won't end well. You know, you won't feel good to begin with. Well, we can do, we have liberty, but we shouldn't make that a way um, to do what we don't need to do, which is not things that aren't good. So let's look at uh, Galatians 5, verse 1, a little bit further back in that same book. Galatians 5, verse 1, so Christ has truly set us free. Now, make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Or we could say slavery to any form, any type of conduct. We're talking about condemnation. Don't get put into condemnation falsely because somebody is condemning you into doing it their way, which isn't biblical to begin with. And certainly don't make it up yourself. See, that's a tactic of the devil. You can easily, I can easily fall into where we feel like we have to do something to please God, stuff that is good. I mean, things that, hey, you're going to discipline yourself. For the kingdom of God, you're going to, you name it, you're going to read certain things, you're going to exercise a certain way, you're going to eat a certain way, you're going to have a regimen of study, you're going to go and minister to certain people certain times in the week, or anything that you can start doing that you intend to do it well and good, but it can become a law to you. 
and then it will become a stick, a club that Satan can beat you up with, the thing that you started to do well, then you don't do it quite the way to the level that you want it to or the way you'd want to do it. And it's not that you're sinning, you're trying to do something well, but now you're not conforming to what you set out to do or what somebody else said you should do or what you read in some book that worked for them. And now the thing that was supposed to be good now becomes a club where Satan condemns you. See, if it's not sin, your heart isn't even condemning you. You are fooled into taking condemnation when there isn't anything you're doing wrong and you're not walking in freedom. And this happens. This is so easy for this to happen, which is why we need to be aware of it. We need to stay free. We need to stay in, in flowing with God and being free. And yes, follow our heart and do what He's told us to do. Just be careful of, of comparing yourself to other people and falling into a, a system of rules that we've uh, um, put on ourselves. That where we want to actually press in and, and come up higher actually becomes something to push us lower because we're not where we want to be yet. And if Satan can't stop you from acting, he can push you to go faster. Another thing is he'll say you're not going enough now. You're not doing it right now. And that'll cripple you. Verse 2, listen. I, Paul, tell you this, if you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ has no benefit to you. Let's go back and read verse 1 into 2 again. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. This is after the earlier chapter we read in 2 where uh, Paul was coming and saying, hey, you guys are being hypocrites. You're acting one way around certain people and another way around other people. You, that, you know, that, and they were emphasizing being circumcised as a way of holiness. That was in the Old Covenant, but it's not a way to uh, please God. And so then verse 2 says, listen, Paul, I, Paul, tell you this, if you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. You could insert whatever you want in the place of circumcision. If you're counting on your discipline, your regimen, your diet, your way of study, your service for God, any your, your number of hours you read the Bible, number of hours you pray, anything that you can become something that we're depending on to actually make us feel right instead of what Jesus did and that we're free to serve Him, what somebody else said, what the book you read, any 12 steps, 13 steps, 84 steps, whatever. It's the same principle here. Verse 3, I'll say it again. If you are trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, or we can insert any kind of behavior, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. In other words, if you're going to try to be made right by what you're doing, then why don't you just go back under the old covenant and do everything that was said to do there, which you can't do, and you can't be made right. You can't be acquitted by doing that. That's what we read earlier. Verse 4, for if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. If Christ is the way to be right with God, but we're depending on something else, we're no longer depending on Christ. And so the reality is, he's not saying you're you're not saved. It means, but you're not going to be in liberty. You're going to be back into bondage that we've been set free from. We're free. And then we've voluntarily gone back and said, well, I'm free. Jesus has made me right with God, but now I know I have to do these things. And if I don't do it just like that, then I start to feel guilt and I start to feel shame and I start to feel condemnation, which is crippling. So you're trying, you're further maybe than you ever have been in a certain area. You're doing more, just name it, whatever it is. You've pressed in more, but it's not where you think you should be or what you've been duped into believing you should be. Not that it's a bad thing. You want to increase. You want to be further, but be careful that if you don't miss it, that you still, you start feeling condemnation for nothing else than your own misunderstanding because God's not condemning you. Your own heart isn't condemning you. We've been duped into letting Satan condemn us to cripple us from doing the work of God. And the, and, and the result of that is you shrink back from pressing in because you don't feel you're qualified and now you're inactive because you're not 
over there. And if I can't be over there yet, I'm not going to do anything. When you actually we're on the right track. And if we just realize, hey, that's a good goal, but that's not what makes me free. That's a good goal. I want to come up and I will get there and I'll be there. We're not talking even about, we're not talking about sin here. We're talking about work us pressing into the things of God. We're inspired. We want to go further. We tr- step out, but we're not there yet. And so then we get beat up and we just go backwards. Well, that's who, who would want you to go backwards? Well, we have an enemy and he's subtle. This is the type of stuff he uses. So verse 4, for if you are trying to make yourselves right with God, by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace, but we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ or place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or uncircumcised, or you could put whatever you want in there. Eating certain things, regimen, reading, whatever. It's not a benefit of doing those things in alone, in those things alone. It says what is important is faith expressing itself in love, that you are loving God, you are loving people, and so you're doing these things not out of sense of religious duty or pride or I'm getting further, but you're doing out of love because you want to be more effective for the kingdom of God. And so if you're doing it like that, then hey, if you're not where you want to be, you're going you're to get up tomorrow and you're going to conquer further. You'll do it more tomorrow. Now get there. You're certainly not going to get there if you stop and go backwards. Just be patient and move on and keep going. Uh, Galatians 6 verse 1, then next chapter, brethren, if a man is overtaken by any, in any trespass, you who are spiritual, resource to, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Verse 4, but let each one examine his own work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Verse 4, let each one examine his own work. And then he will have faith or he will have rejoicing in himself alone, not in another. In other words, you do, do your own job before God. In other places it says, have faith to God. Before God. In other words, you're not supposed to do, you can't walk in somebody else's faith, and you don't need to broadcast what you're doing to everybody else. We're walking before Him, doing what He's had wants us to do in our convictions, and you do the best you know how to do with what God's telling you. And then it says you can you look at your own. It's basically are we doing what God has asked us to do? It's not what somebody else is doing. It's not what somebody else, uh, their regimen, it's what he's asking us. And if we'll do that, we'll have rejoicing in ourselves, not in another. In a couple other versions of that, verse 4, Galatians 6, 4 in the CEB, it says, each person should test their own work and be happy with doing a good job and not compare themselves with others. Not compare themselves with others. We're not running against somebody else. The, the, the standard is who we were yesterday. I mean, we have the standard of Christ coming up. We know that. But where we're walking it out, you're not competing against somebody else and you're not competing against some other method. It's, are, am I going further in what God has called me to do today versus yesterday? And just keep pressing in. And, and that, is the, that is what we want to be motivated for. The standard of Christ But as He's giving us direction and guidance, then let's press in and look at what we're doing and not get caught up with other people. In the Living Bible, it says, Let everyone be sure that he is doing his very best, for, for then he will have the personal satisfaction of work well done and won't need to compare himself with somebody else, someone else. In the Amplified... It says, but each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior, and then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself 
to another. We are all coming. We're all at different places. We all are coming from different backgrounds. God knows where we are. And so what we need to do is go before Him and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? I know your, your written word. I, I see uh, He can quicken that to you and say, no, you need to work on this area. And He might say, you need to, you need to cut this off. You need to stop doing this thing. That doesn't mean it's the gospel of everybody should stop doing this thing. It might mean for us, we need to do that because of where we've come from. And different people have different temptations. And there's things that, that you may not need to go anywhere near. You don't go within 500 feet of certain things. And other people can be right up next to it, not bother them whatsoever. And then vice versa. There's something things that you, don't bother you at all. But somebody else gets near it, it trips them up right away. Well, we need to know our path. There might be certain things we need to focus on. God's dealing with us. You spend extra time on this. You study this. You look at this. Okay, well, do that. Don't get tripped up. You don't do it perfect. Just, just stay on doing what God has told us to do. You don't have to look at anybody else. And it's like, it doesn't matter what this person did, this person, what they're dealing with. It's stupid to go, well, that doesn't bother me. Why do they have to? Why don't, why don't they do such and such? That wouldn't bother me. It doesn't matter. Maybe God's dealt with them because it does bother them. We don't need to. That's just pride. What we need to say is, God, what are you having me to do? And then I'm going to do that, and I'm going to, my standard is what you've told me to do in your word and what you're prompting me and convicting me to do in, in my life that's going to bring me forward. I want to be the best version of myself that I can be, and you know how to get me there. You know what I need to do now. If I try to take a leap and try to leap and try to leap when I'm just trying, supposed to take a step and all I can handle is a step, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to leap. I'm going to try and I'm never going to get there. But if I just take the steps you told me to do, now I can keep moving forward. And somebody else may think, well, you're not taking any steps. They're just baby steps. Doesn't matter. I'm not answering to you, not answering to you. I'm answering to my Lord. So I'm not going to feel condemned that I'm not doing what you look like you're doing or what you look like you're doing. I'm going to do what God's asked me to do. And now, as long as I'm doing what he's asked me to do and making progress, now I can hold my head up high and I can just be free and I can enjoy what God's telling me to do and he'll all just go from glory to glory to glory, come up, come up, and I can just enjoy my salvation. I'm not giving Satan a club to beat me up because I'm not concerned about the other person. I'm not concerned about another regiment or somebody else. They may be taking five steps at a time. Good for them. I'm at the place where I'm taking half a step, but I'm going to keep taking those half steps in this area. They maybe look like they're, they're doing circles around me. Okay, fine, but I'm doing this. I'm not going to let that condemn me. That's not my problem. God's their God. If they're born again, God, that's between them and God. This is between me and him. So I'm going to do what I know to do and go on, and then I can just enjoy. It is not my responsibility to live somebody else's faith walk. Not somebody else. It's not my responsibility to come under somebody else's steps or their faith instructions. It's my responsibility to do what God has told me to do. And as long as I do that and my conscience is clear according to what He's telling me to do, I can just walk free and clear and enjoy where I am, wherever. And then year after year, I can just keep enjoying. I may be further than I used to be, but thank God I'm here. Not going to be as further, far as I, I will in the future, but thank God I'm here and I'm living before God and I can just enjoy my salvation. He's faithful to help us do that. He's faithful to help us do that. Yes. Not what somebody else tells us we need to do that help them. Amen. God's good. He loves us. He knows where we're at. Thank you, Lord.